it's not bad, uh, but the breadth is a little negative. One stock which has done well this morning is Rally Gear because the company now made an ac acquisition for $170 million as landmark partner. Sachin Ranath Group, CEO of Rally Gear, joins me now to talk about that. Sachin, good morning. Thanks for joining in. Take us through what is landmark and what it brings to the table for Rally Gear. Uh, landmark is uh, a very marquee uh, secondary uh, real estate private equity fund of uh, fund of fund business. Uh, they do the secondary LP transactions uh, across the globe. They have uh, invested roughly around more than 300 global private equities buying the secondary in interest. What the importance of this transaction has been, as, as you know, we have been trying to build really a global asset management platform wherein we are looking at buying multi-boutique asset management who are unique in their strategies and then we'll help them to grow in emerging markets and also get the capital introduction around the world. So from that perspective, we roughly around a $9 billion uh, uh, asset management firm which has a very, very strong institutional LP base, has a very, very strong uh, relationship in the private equity world. So obviously it takes Relegate to a very, very different scale. Relegate name in global asset management world would be now known very well. Mm. In terms of pure uh, revenues and income, can you just take us through what Landmark could add in terms of fee income and whether it's profitable with its team? Yes, it is. Uh, so the way we have gone by uh, in building our entire global asset management platform with them, we have tried to first go into the alternative uh, alternative space. In that also we have been conscious to go for logged in revenue businesses. So both Northgate and Landmark, they have 10 year logged in revenue. Uh, Landmark would be doing, if I'm, if I'm right, uh, roughly around you know, $50 million of top line and a 45% EBITDA margin. Uh, in fact, if you see all the asset management business of Relegate now constitute roughly around $15 billion. $9 billion of Landmark, $3 billion of Northgate, $3 billion of Relegate asset management in India. So we are technically from an Indian jurisdiction's perspective or an Indian owned asset management business, we are the fourth largest uh, after Reliance, HDFC, NASDAQ, etc. And simultaneously very substantially profitability. In our projection in FY11, all these asset management businesses till whatever we have acquired till date would generate roughly around $75 million of top line and around $38 million of uh, EBITDA profit. And now from here the journey would be to look at uh, creating the portfolio of affiliates into all asset classes. We would go for long only, fixed income, uh, liquid pool of asset managers. And once we create the full platform, then we would help them in bringing their investment professional expertise to allocate their capital in most of the emerging market. Because the, uh, most of these asset management firms which are in the range of 5 billion to say 20 billion dollars, they have two constant pressures. Pressures from their LP to get better alpha from the emerging market and they find it very difficult to get that. And second, to get capital introduction from their, from their non-conventional market which is US and Europe. So go and get money from Japan, go and get money from Korea, go and get money from Gulf. So on the, both account, given that really is expanding emerging market footprint and our distribution capability which we are building on really a global asset management level, with the business where they are today, we think so that we should be able to add significant value both in terms of their investing capabilities and also in terms of their capital raising capabilities. Mm. What are you more focused on, Sajindra, right now? Is it the asset management business or is it the transaction space, which is broking or fee income or advisory income from the uh, broking related space? Uh, just want to understand uh, from a consolidated basis how much of your top line would come from either of these two? Uh, within the way uh, we are trying to build the business, it's uh, as we have tried to explain, delegate story is, is very unknown. People find it very difficult to understand what we are trying to do. From an outside market perspective, people think that we are trying to do a lot of things, but that's not the fact. Fact is we are building the three core pillars of our business. An integrated financial services play on India. We believe that there is a significant revenue opportunity which India throws and we can use that as an opportunity and build an emerging market plan. Platform. And that we are doing by building an emerging market investment bank and a global asset management which has high linkages to emerging market. But if you, if you look at from two years perspective from now, 70% of our revenue would still continue to come from India. But that would give us the base to build 
our emerging market footprint, substantial amount of revenue would come from our investment banking and global asset management play. But in our investment banking also, a substantial portion of revenue would continue to come from India. So you can see us as India-led emerging market footprint creating financial services. And in that emerging market financial services, we are very focused to build two lines of businesses, investment banking and global asset management. Hmm. Any progress on the banking license, uh, Sachindra? You have expressed your interest earlier. Where do things stand as of now? Any recent conversations with the Reserve Bank? No, we, we are ourselves are gearing, uh, yeah, <coughs> we are waiting for the final guidelines to come into the place. Uh, we are trying to, to, to build new level of governance model. We have uh, brought in uh, substantial level of domain expertise on Relic and Enterprises Board. Stuart and Katsin has joined. Katsin was the CIO for Fidelity Asia. Stuart was CEO for Qatar Financial Services Authority. At every level in our organization, the continuous message to our CEOs, uh, all the eight CEOs, to improve governance, uh, showcase Relic as you know, the best, best performing company, not in just terms of profitability, but in terms of sustainability and how we, how we address regulators, customers, service. So all of that we are doing. Simultaneously also our entire business strategy team is working towards building a model which is which can achieve the regulatory intent of building a banking uh, franchise which can go to mass, rural, retail, financial inclusion can be put a part of that but simultaneously we want to be a profitable business. Ultimately we want to generate the, as management team we want to generate the best return to our stakeholder. But the combination of the two is very difficult to achieve and that's what where we are trying to be most innovative and find new ways to to deliver a banking model. And once once we have done that and once regulation in place, we would go and present uh, to regulators and if they would like us, to, I think so we are we are very well suited to, to do that. Good luck Sachindra. Thanks very much for joining in today. That's the management talking about the, their latest global acquisition for one seventy million dollars. Uh, Market slipped into the red, though just about, let's say, flat for the Nifty. The mid-cap index continues to be down half a percent, so some corrections and at individual levels, some sharp corrections going on related to the news flow of yesterday. When we come back, we'll talk about flows. They've not been great so far the last couple of weeks, but we'll ask Farhan Mumtaz of Eureka Hedge whether they can pick up in December. That's after the break.